Look at this uh, a little closer with retired U.S. Air Force General uh, John Teichert, who uh, joins us from Washington. Uh, welcome, General. Um, Ukraine never comments on these drone attacks on Moscow, but if we presume that Kyiv is behind them, as Russia says, what might their strategy be? Absolutely, and thanks for having me. And I think maybe their strategy is twofold. Number one, to make psychological blows to the narrative that's coming from Putin that proves that this war isn't going swimmingly for the Russians and to prove that the Russian population is actually at risk. And then secondarily, I think that they are making practical strides via drone attacks to cut off logistical lines or to interdict them. And just a couple of days ago, an attack on a Russian airfield allowed them to destroy one strategic bomber and to damage four. And I think the combination of moral and practical effects of these drone strikes is having a good effect according to Ukrainian strategy. And psychological blows rather than trying to actually destroy the Kremlin. I think that if they could, they would make those attacks as potent as possible and make real strategic gains there. But I think at least for now, based on the size and the distance and the payload of these drones, a couple of sporadic attacks throughout Moscow keeps Putin winning and the population of Russia winning, again, that things aren't going exactly their way during the last 18 months. Uh, Germany's foreign minister ha has said that uh, if these are Ukrainian drone attacks, then they, are, uh, then they are legal under international law. What's your assessment? So let me start by where the real war crimes are taking place here, and that's via Putin. And you think about the daily strikes on population centers in Ukraine and even cultural sites, and you add to that the kidnapping of Ukrainian children and the destruction of a dam that yielded humanitarian, ecological, and environmental crises, and then the cutoff of food supplies that may ultimately starve 20 million people. And that's where the real war criminal is. In fact, so bad that Putin can't join the BRICS summit in South Africa because he would be forced to be apprehended. Now, with respect to the Ukrainians, we have the right to make sure that they are following international law. And as long as they are not intentionally targeting civilians, or as long as they are targeting military sites without unnecessary collateral damage, then they are following international law. Right. Uh, and we've seen drone strikes from both sides increase over recent months. Is this as simple as because they are cheaper, a, a cheaper form of warfare? I think it's a combination of it's less risky to personnel and it's less expensive. And these drones are extremely capable. The United States is an example and our NATO partners have been using dra drones to good effect, not just for intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, but for their strike capability now for a couple of decades. And I think that as those drones get less expensive and smaller, then they can have very good effect. And I think both the Russian side and the Ukrainian side realizes that. Good talking to you. Thank you for that, uh, General. Retired U.S. Uh, Air Force General John Teichert. Thank you, sir.